a black market worth millions of dollars, and it's helping fund the Islamic State. Countries around the world report the terrorists are feeding off remnants of history, and some may not realize they could be inadvertently helping them. CCTV's Francis Co explains. What ISIL doesn't destroy in Syria and Iraq, they're selling for a hefty profit. They're benefiting not only from the sale, but also just from the trade itself. Deborah Lair is chair and co founder of the Washington based Antiquities Coalition. It's a group of worldwide experts fighting the illegal trade of antiquities by terrorist groups like ISIL. You see one day pristine sands, and three months later it looks like Swiss cheese. This is a satellite image provided by the U.S. Department of State. It shows the site of Dura Europos in eastern Syria, often called the Pompeii of the Desert. The colored areas show looting in the area, with the red sections indicating the most severe looting. Lair says ISIL militants often prey on struggling locals, offering cash so they will do the digging. Obviously, local people are doing a lot of this for very understandable reasons. It's a very difficult economic time. From Syria and Iraq, it's believed some items stay within the Middle East. Others travel to East Asia and Europe. Some treasures have shown up in the United States. Without an expert eye, the goods often pass right through security checks. Your average customs official will know if he sees a kilo of cocaine that it's automatically illegal. But if they're seeing an ancient pot, they don't know in some cases whether it's just a tourist trinket or if it's a 3,000 year old urn. Museums also play a big role in this fight. The Smithsonian Institution here in Washington housed some antiquities from one region in Syria currently being desecrated by ISIL. This bust from Palmyra is one of the few Syrian artifacts housed here. This video exhibit features early images of the Palmyra Arch, now destroyed by ISIL. Nobody's coming to you with a black mask, <laughs> you know, and saying, hey, we stole this. So museums use their expertise to spot suspicious items. The institutions also help train customs officers to recognize them. Another tool is the Red List, a database maintained in part by the International Council of Museums. It warns of items around the world most at risk of being looted. eBay, the U.S.-based online marketplace, says it hasn't seen any direct evidence of looted items from Iraq and Syria showing up on its site, but it warns potential buyers to beware. There's been some collectors on the market who've actually said right out that a way to protect this material is to buy it. Well, of course, there's a fallacy in that. It just increases the price and provides more incentive for ISIS to loot more and sell more and make more money. A looting of treasures from a precious past prompting fears of what the future may bring. These kinds of cultural cleansing that we've seen going on by ISIS is really a precursor in many instances to ethnic cleansing. Francis Coe, CCTV, Washington.